for Cremo Media's Polity, I'm Musabi Hoyani. Development strategist Dr. Kate Phillip joins me to discuss community work programs and their role in the South African labor context. Thank you so much, Doctor, for your time today. The Community Work Program, or CWP, uh, CWP, is an initiative by the South African government designed to use public employment as an instrument of uh, community development. Please would you outline the history of this program and how it relates to other um, public works programs? Uh, the Community Work Program was an outcome of a strategy process that was commissioned by the South African Presidency to look at the intractable problem of economic marginalization and how to develop strategies to enable the economic inclusion of the most marginalized. Uh, it was proposed as an outcome of that strategy process and agreement was reached to pilot the concept. Uh, that was done. Um, the pilot was successful and it was then integrated into government programs as part of the expanded public works program. I should perhaps just explain how it fits in, how it relates to the Expanded Public Works Program and, and uh, the key features of the Community uh, Work Program that differentiate it um, from the rest of the Expanded Public Works Program. Uh, the Community Work Program was designed specifically to respond to the problem of deep structural unemployment in the most marginalized areas of the country. And it was recognized that in those areas, uh, Participation in public employment is not an easy stepping stone into other work because there just aren't other jobs. Mm -hmm. And so the community work program, instead of offering a short-term episode of full-time work like most of the existing public employment programs do, what CWP offers is regular and predictable part-time work. So it offers two days of work a week on a regular and predictable basis. What also differentiates the CWP uh, from other programs is that it's a government program, but it's implemented by non-profit agencies in a partnership between government, non-profit agencies, and the community. The CWP was also designed to be a community-driven program, so that the kind of work that is done in the program is actually not predetermined by government. The work that's done in the program is actually decided at community level through participatory processes. So those are the key features of the community work program. So what has been the impact of the CWP so far and how many projects have been undertaken and how many people have been involved? At this stage, uh, the community work program operates at a scale of about 200,000 participants. It's operating in 148 different sites in different parts of the country that more or less equates to about 148 different municipalities. And government has made uh, a commitment to scale it up significantly. Uh, so it's, it's a program that started relatively recently and has already scaled up uh, very fast. In terms of its impacts, the impacts exist at different levels. Mm -hmm. For the participants, the most obvious impact is the incomes that are earned. Um, and that impacts on their households and things like child nutrition mm -hmm. uh, and has those kinds of impacts. But I think the point about a public employment program is that it's about more than just the income. Mm -hmm. It's also about the value of participating in work. Mm -hmm. And that's where some of the most interesting impacts are starting to emerge. Uh, research done recently by uh, the Center for Democratizing Information has illustrated that participation in work is impacting on the capabilities of participants in all kinds of ways. As a consequence of uh, regular social interaction, people are more integrated into social networks, they're more exposed to opportunities, uh, and perhaps the most intangible but almost the most important impact is this issue of agency. Mm. That what we see is that people develop a renewed faith in their ability to impact on their own world mm -hmm. through their own actions. Um, and through participation in work, people get a greater confidence in their own ability to, to participate economically, mm -hmm. um, to improve the quality of their lives, uh, to take decisions, to act, to take initiative. That's crucial. That's just at the level of participants. Mm -hmm. At the level of, of, of communities, um, there are also these different levels of impacts. The first level is obviously the impact of the assets and services. Through community participatory processes, the kind of work that is done typically responds to challenges that a community is facing. So, and, and so the impacts of the assets and services that are delivered usually 
uh, or are intended to improve the quality of life in communities. Just one very practical example. Um, the clinic sister in Bo Bocciabello uh, has said that uh, the decline in multi-drug resistant TB in that area, yes. she attributes it to the care work undertaken by CWP participants. Now that's, a, that's one powerful outcome. Mm. Um, the other level of outcome in communities is the same issue of agency, that through participating in identifying work that needs to be done at community level, communities also get an enhanced sense of their ability to participate in the development process, a sense of ownership over the development Breaking process. Breaking the cycle of dependency. To exactly. Exactly. All right. Like you said, the CWP uses participatory like local processes to identify work that needs to be done to improve the quality of life in poor communities. Um, explain how these processes work exactly. Where, where community development processes are done effectively, and I think one of the challenges is that that isn't always the case, mm -hmm. but where community development processes are done effectively as part of the process, essentially what it involves is when a site starts, when the community uh, work program starts in a community, in partnership with local government, there's a process of identifying stakeholders and role players in the community and of bringing together those stakeholders in various consultative ways to identify what needs to be done in this mm. community. I think the, the underlying assumption and, and um, principle of the community work program is this notion that um, there's actually no shortage of work to be done in poor communities. Mm. And CWP is there uh, as a resource for communities to get that work done in partnership with government and, and as a government program. But um, the process then of consulting communities about what needs to be done delivers the program of, 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 of work. It's also important that communities participate in the monitoring and evaluation that follows uh, that process. So there's an iterative process of learning at community level. Please give us an indication of the kinds of projects that have been undertaken, for example, in the fields of education, health, uh, community safety, and even food security. Because the work is decided locally, mm. um, the work differs from site to site. So it, it responds to needs at local level. At the same time, a typical menu of work has emerged that is similar at many sites. And the kinds of work that is typically undertaken includes, firstly, work to address hunger. Yes. So a whole range of different types of food security work food gardens at public facilities like schools or creches or clinics. Um, interestingly also, uh, food security work to support the food security of households affected by illness uh, such as HIV or mm. TB mm. Um, or households that are particularly vulnerable. The CWP provides the labor to sustain their food gardens, to su sustain their food, their food security. Mm. Then a lot of the work um, is uh, related to care, care of people who are ill, care of the elderly, care of orphans, vulnerable children. So there's a you typically a, a large menu of care work in the, in the program. Communities have also used the program to address issues of community safety. It's been used to support schools in all kinds of different ways, whether providing security at schools or after school classes. Um, supporting sports activity at school, uh, simply cleaning up the school mm -hmm. in some instances. Mm -hmm. That's decided locally with the principal, with the teachers, with the school governing body, but there's been a big push in that direction. There's also public art, participation in public art. A number of sites have created public facilities like uh, public parks. Um, actually, the, the type of work that is undertaken is very varied and often very creative. Mm. You recently wrote a report for the International Labour Organization on the CWP. What were the report's key findings? The report was actually trying to document some of these positive and often inspiring outcomes, mm -hmm. also to look at the challenges. Mm -hmm. I think the main uh, conclusion, if you like, um, out of the report was to say, here is a really interesting development approach that is enabling new forms of partnership between government, civil society and communities, that is building development competencies in civil society, mm -hmm. that's unlocking new forms of community development. And then perhaps most importantly, this issue of agency, this yes. issue of the ability 
uh, of unlocking people's sense of their own ability to impact on the quality of their lives through 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 their actions. Due to um, its history of exclusion, South Africa basically suffers from a very high level of structural unemployment. Do you think that the CWP plays a role in alleviating South Africa's unemployment problem? The CWP was specifically designed um, in the context of structural unemployment. It was a recognition that precisely because unemployment is structural, it's actually going to take us a certain amount of time to solve the problem. Mm. And we just don't have time. We actually have to get young people to work, even where markets aren't managing to do so. Mm -hmm. And we needed a policy instrument that could allow us to do that, to get people to work while other levels of economic policy address the issues of structural unemployment. So the CWP is not a solution to structural unemployment on its own, but it is an instrument that needs to be part of that complementary mix of instruments um, designed to address uh, that overall problem. Right. Do you think that the CWP has made a difference to the life of those people who have participated and could it be scaled up in the future? I think there's a lot of evidence that participation in the CWP makes a big difference in people's lives, but obviously it's not a total solution. It's a form of employment entry point and an opportunity often for people who've never worked before. And obviously it needs to be complemented with other other strategies and complement strategies and, and, and policies such as social protection uh, policies. Mm -hmm. So on it, you know, obviously, um, yes, it makes a difference, but uh, it's not a solution on its, on its own. That said, it is an instrument that was actually designed to be scaled up quickly mm -hmm. because we need to roll out opportunities for first experience of employment mm -hmm. in the most marginal areas as fast as we can. Thank you so much, Doc, for those insights. That was Dr. Kate Phillip discussing public employment as an instrument of community development.